everybody. This is Nicole with Topaz. Thanks for joining us for Quick Tip Thursday, Simple Masks Using Remask and Photoshop Selection Tools. Greg Rastami is back with us. Greg, if you didn't know, is our Topaz expert. He's our trade show rep and he has amazing tricks and tips that just blow me away sometimes with the stuff that he can do with them. So today I'm happy to have him back with us. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, so with that, I'll go ahead and give it over to you. So take it away, Greg. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. Um, well, we just got back from New Orleans where we were doing the Imaging USA show, and uh, I was surprised by how many people were asking about either blue screen or green screen compositing. And in general, you know, compositing that just needs to be a little bit more uh, automatic in general. So I wanted to highlight a feature that has been in Topaz, actually, I should say Topaz Remask, since the first release of Remask that is very, very powerful in allowing you to do much faster masks than you ever thought possible. Um, and for that example, I'm going to use this uh, Brighton Room that's been photographed against the sky background to show you exactly how it's done. So once the image gets loaded into Photoshop, you'll notice that it is by default a background because this was just a JPEG. So usually the first thing that I do is I double click on the background and I just click at, click at OK, which means that now it's no longer a locked background. It's just a layer so that uh, it's easy for us to then you know, jump into uh, Topaz Remask or whatever else we want to do. Now we're going to use some of the masking tools that are already inherent in Photoshop. And in this particular case, the way we're going to do that is using color range. So now you can see that when color range comes up, um, there's a couple different options over here. Usually what I do is I start with a black mat, and I just start sampling some of the colors from the background. And as I click, right now it's only just sampling that particular color. And also notice that right now I have localized color clusters selected, which is, uh, for this particular example, pretty good. But you're welcome to turn that on or off and experiment with how that's going to work. Next, I'm going to click on the plus button, which means we want to add to the color ranges that we want to select. So in this tutorial, essentially what I want to do is highlight how you're going to be able to use the existing masking tools in Photoshop along with the tools of Topaz Remask. Now you're noticing that as I kind of like move my way down the background, the mask over here is being represented. Now I can ask also uh, Photoshop to represent that area actually in white, which is kind of nice because it allows me to really, really see the areas that are being masked out. And I can see, for example, over here that I'm getting the arm as well, so I can always use the minus key there to just try to mat minus that out. So you can see that basically I'm uh, trying to get as good of a mask that I can just by simply doing color selections. Like for example, I see right now the sky might be just a little noisy, so I'm going to click a few times around the sky to see if I can get rid of some of that noise. And once I'm satisfied with the way that this mask looks, and right now actually uh, it looks pretty good, you know, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and invert it, which means that I'm really interested actually um, in the character and the background. And in fact, that's the way that I had it was exactly right. So I, I actually like, the, like it the way that it appears right now. And we're going to click OK. So now you can see that immediately we have a cutout, or I should say a selection, in Photoshop. Usually what I do at this point is I'll go into maybe some of the other refinement tools that Photoshop has to offer. But just as a, a really simple rule of thumb, usually what I'll do at this point is just under the selection, I'll go under Feather. And I'll feather that mask by only about one pixel. All right, so now I want to show you what that mask looks like right now. And the way you do that is uh, we're going to turn off the quick mask mode. And under channels, we will also turn off RGB. So that allows me now to actually very closely uh, see exactly what my mask looks like. And as I zoom in, uh, I can see that, yes, because I did feather it, with a level of one, it's giving me uh, a blurry edge to this mask. And I do see a little bit of problems, for example, here in the lower right hand corner that we can address as well a little later on. But right now, it's actually very, very good for what I'm about to do next. So here is where it gets really fun and exciting. All right. 
Now we're going to go back to the mask mode, which means we see the marching ants. And we're going to also convert that actually into a layer mask. And once we've done that, we'll click back onto the RGB. This is very important here in the lower right-hand corner. And at this point, now that we have a layer mask, we will jump into Topaz Labs' Topaz Remask 3. Okay, now you're going to be really surprised with what you're going to see. You're going to see that any area of the image that was essentially gray has now been replaced with the, um, the blue. And I see that the top of the screen right now is a little too gray. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think that was going to be so gray up on the top there. And if I do see that, it's always easy. I can always say cancel. Then here under my layer mask, as I'm modifying it, uh, I can take the transparency of the top and let's just modify that just a little bit. I'll go into the levels over here and bring that up just a tad like that. So I'm going to try to basically make my blacks become just a little bit more black. Okay, and I'll click OK. And I'll click back on my RGB. And let's try that just one more time. So under selection, we uh, under filter, pardon me, I'm going to go back to Topaz Remask 3. OK, there we go. That's what we were looking for. So now you're noticing, here's what's going on. As I zoom in, I can see that because of that blur or that feather that we did on our mask, that already, without us having to do any of the outlines here in Topaz Remask, that outline has already been done for us, which is really, really wonderful because this is going to save you a lot of time. Now, normally when I'm working and I'm not doing a, uh, a webinar, I go much, much faster. I'm just uh, going a little bit slower here for you just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, because what would normally happen is that every time there's some kind of a hole, you would have to go in there and actually you know, do the mask with, manually with the brush. So at this point, uh, even though we've just simply come into Topaz Remask, all you're going to do is just click on a compute mask button. And immediately, there it is. You get your beautiful, beautiful mask. Now, as I zoom in, I can see that uh, the areas that are supposed to have, for example, some uh, motion blur. In fact, in the hands, we can see that there was supposed to be some motion blur. And in the mask, we, see, we can see some of the motion blur as well. That's actually working out pretty well. Um, some of the areas in remask that we might, at this point, want to like, re-examine or retouch is I can see a few of the problems here around the mask and using the normal Topaz magic brush functions, which you're already familiar with in Topaz Remask, I can click, let's say, the red brush, which is identifying our background, and click on the background there, and that's going to help you know, get rid of that little dot that we just saw. And as we zoom out, we want to now focus on her veil. So let me actually put this as a split screen side by side so we can see not only the original image, but we can also see the mask image here on the side. I'm going to change it for a moment just to the tri map so we can see the areas of the veil. So now, since the rest of the outline has already been done, all we want to do is make the veil areas become more blue. Now, please keep in mind that blue is the computation brush, which means anything that you do in blue is going to be now uh, calculated by Remask as basically like a semi-transparent area. So I'm going to do these areas here blue because I know they're semi-transparent. And as I do that, I'll switch it over here to the mask and I can see immediately what a beautiful effect we're getting over here. We're actually getting this beautiful semi-transparent effect where the hands are coming through as well as the transparency of the veil is coming through. So let's do that here for the top as well where there's a little bit of semi-transparency up there. Again, I'll brush over that. And uh, it looks like it's, again, doing a very, very good job of bringing some of that through. And then finally, the only thing that is a little bit of an issue with this mask right now is the fact that the original color of the blue of the background is kind of bleeding through the veil. And as I zoom in, I can see some parts of that blue that's kind of contaminating the color of the veil. So uh, one of my favorite features in the new Remask 3 is foreground color recovery. You basically want to crank this up all the way to uh, 100%. And uh, usually at this point, because I'm dealing with the veil, I'll try to like desaturate some of these uh, transition areas as well. And I'm actually pretty happy with the way that things are looking right now. now I'm going to zoom in. I see a, a little bit of a problem over here. So I'll just use my blue brush to uh, get rid of that. Okay, there we go. It's beginning to look better there. Let me actually make this be a little bit larger. 
as it encompasses more of the, the veil. There we go. We're getting that to be better and better. And finally, I can use the green brush, uh, which is here at the top. Now, when I'm working, usually I'm using the keyboard shortcuts for all of this. But uh, again, right now, just for the sake of going a little bit slower, I'm going to use some of the buttons that you already know about uh, that are on the left-hand side of Remask. So now, I can switch back to our single view. And I'm going to essentially go around the edges looking for any problem areas. Oh, I see a little bit of a problem over area over here where I see some of the original background that's bleeding through the top of her veil. So usually when I see that, I click on my red brush. And I'll just kind of go in here and brush right across the top. And what that's going to do is that it's going to force Remask to uh, reevaluate the, the background or the foreground color recovery of that area. And it will clean it up. And once you're satisfied with the way that this is all working together, oh, well, I see a little bit of a problem here with this ear. So let me look at it as a mask. I can uh, zoom in a bit further and switch over to my green brush. And we'll solidify that too, just like that. Let's take a look at the final results. There we go. I'll zoom out. It's looking really, really, really good. Um, and uh, one final note is one of the other uh, new features in the new Topaz Remask 3 is a function that's called high quality foreground color recovery. Now what this does is it's going to analyze all of the semi-transparent areas of your mask and it's trying to do its best to take out some of that background color contamination that might be there. Now the main reason why I activated this right now is because I could see some of the dark sky that were behind his fingers that were bleeding around his fingers. And instead of manually going in there and kind of touching that up with a blue brush, I just went ahead and chose to do it with our new foreground color recovery. So I think that's going to do a good job. And yeah, there we go. It looks absolutely perfect. And when you're satisfied with it, you click OK. And ta-da, there is now our final mask. And just to kind of like put closure to this, what I'll also do is uh, uh, just create a new layer here for you. I'll put that layer in the background, and I will fill it in here with black or just any other uniform color you like. Let's uh, go back to our default colors and fill it in with just a uniform color so you can see that the mask in the background looks absolutely perfect. So that is a quick little tutorial on how to use just the existing masking tools that are in Photoshop as a fast way of doing the blue boundaries that you normally would have to do by hand. All right. Thank you, Greg. Uh, there are quite a few questions. Can you tell me first what Photoshop programs this, um, your tips are compatible with? Well, uh, this is going to work with um, basically any Photoshop that has any kind of selection tools, you know. So Photoshop's that have either a color range selector or the quick mask selector. In fact, you can see over here that I'm using currently Photoshop CS4, but I know the quick selection tool has become available ever since Photoshop CS3. But, but essentially, um, the real point I'm trying to make is that any tool that allows you to have basically a mask, a layer mask, in Photoshop can be a great way to start off your workflow in Topaz Remask 3. Let's see here. This is actually just a, a Remask question um, that's from Alex. He says he shoots product photography for a living and most of his clients wish for the background removed. Uh, the problem he has with Remask and other programs with their auto select uh, features that it does such a good job on difficult objects but it doesn't deliver nice hard crisp edges and there always seems to be a, a soft feather um, in which he spends more time to clean up than if I use the pen tool to create my own mask. Is there any suggestions that you might have? Oh absolutely, yes, yes there is. Um, okay, let, me, let me actually uh, answer that with uh, an example. I'm going to try to see if I can find something here that um, might have somewhat of a harsh edge to it. There we go. Okay. So, so let's say this is a, a typical product photography shot and I wanted to mask these things away from their backgrounds and I want to have a very hard edge to it. Um, so just to, in, uh, to keep in line with what I was showing before, as far as a quick way of not having to do that outline, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I want to only mask out this, let's say, red you know, glass away from the background. 
So you can see that right now I selected the quick selection tool and immediately I'm here just with that quick selection tool going around these edges. Okay, by holding down the Alt key, it's going to allow me to just isolate exactly the area that I want. And you can see that as I do this, it's very intelligently just kind of going down to um, uh, just around the borders and the edges that I want. And it, I'm just kind of like highlighting it to do that. And once I'm satisfied with the way that this looks, and it actually is looking pretty good right now, I'm going to leave it alone. And uh, let me invert the selection. And I'm also going to feather it just the same way as I did before with only a radius of 1, okay, which is very, very important. And um, as before, let's double click on the background layer so it's no longer locked and click on the Add Layer Mask. So that gives me that layer mask there and I click back on my RGB image. And now we actually launch Topazer Mask 3. So now, uh, as before, you'll notice that as I zoom in, that the process of actually manually outlining the glass has already been done for me. You know, because again, what uh, Topaz is doing right now is that it's taking the layer mask that came in from Photoshop and it's using that as the way of creating the tri map. So that the white areas here are identifying the areas that would you normally would make in green, the black areas are identifying the areas in the tri map you would make in red. And anything that's any level of gray is identifying the areas that are going to be your semi-transparent regions, which you can see are now automatically outlined in blue. So now I go ahead and you know do the calculation. So you can see I don't have to do anything. I just do the calculation and it's ready to go. Um, so since you were talking about edges, let me zoom in on one of these edge, edges over here and talk a little bit about what's going on right now. If you look at the original edges and the original transitions that are on this edge, and you'll notice that a very high priority in the design of Topaz is to make sure that these edges, as far as the way that they fall off or the way that they transition to the background, is exactly the way that they transition to the background in the foreground image. We don't want to artificially make that either too hard or too soft. We want that to be exactly right. All right? Now, in your particular case, if you are doing product photography where you want that to be extremely, extremely hard, Here's one of the things you could do. Uh, down at the bottom over here where it says mask adjustment, you can take mask hardness and basically crank it up. You can crank it up all the way. And now you'll see that the mask is no longer soft, that the mask has got a certain level of hardness to it. Now, now, by the way, I do know right now that the top of my mask is not absolutely perfect. And I'm not, I'm not concerned about that right now. I want to you know, more answer the question about how do I get masks to be perfectly, perfectly cut. So once I'm satisfied with the way that this looks, I'm going to click OK. All right. So now I know that the mask that I've created is very hard. At this point, you can actually um, ask Photoshop to make that into a masked cutout or, or to actually create a path from that cutout. OK, thanks. Yeah. That's a good tip. Um, let's see here. I have a couple more questions. Peter says he's a sports photographer, so he has a lot of different colors and motions in the background, and it's not a solid color like you've been working on. How do you work mm -hmm. around that? Well, it, it's going to be it's going to be pretty much the same thing, you know. Regardless of you know what the what the background content is, um, usually when I look at an image, uh, I'm trying to figure out what's the best course of action. You know, well, this the example that I was using before had a very uniform background there. I'm going to try to see if I can find something that might not be as uniform in the background. So, uh, and you know what, since you were talking about sports, there is actually a sports photograph that I have over here. We might be able to use that one. There we go. Okay. So, so this is uh, another really good indication of just something where the background can, can be just absolutely crazy, you know. And we want to be able to mask, let's say, the character away from the background. So again, no matter what the problem is, using the tools that you already have in Photoshop, you can see that Let's say if I only wanted to get this basketball player away from the background. First, I'm using just the typical quick selection tools that you would have in Photoshop to go around the character. As I do that, sometimes I'll turn a refine edge on, and that will help me see exactly where I'm masking, where I'm not masking. And so at this point, I can either now add or subtract to that mask. And so once I'm done with either adding to the mask or subtracting from it, then at that point I would proceed with what has been done before as far as 
you know, uh, doing the little softening of the mask and then adding that to the layer mask in the background. Um, and then finally, uh, regardless of how complicated the background is, by using the new high quality foreground color recovery function, it does a great job of eliminating any of the color bleed that you might have around the edges of your characters. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend that you use that new high quality foreground color recovery option. Okay, great. And Petra says, one of my big issues is air as I shoot pets. Any advice on how to capture this well? Um, I think air. more of the transparent, and I think that would be more of the remask tools as opposed to... Right, right, yeah, yeah. Remask, remask actually really, really, really excels in semi-transparent areas, you know. When you're talking about things that is extremely, extremely subtle, um, in the video tutorial that I have uh, that is with, uh, let's take a look over here. There's a, uh, a great tutorial that I have that I use with uh, this photograph over here, you know, where you've got extremely, extremely subtle pieces of hair like this over here. There is a function inside of Remask which is called, let me show that to you, let me jump into it. Yeah, that function is called the dual, co dual color selection. Let me zoom in on that here for you. Just uh, take a look at the dual color selection tool that allows you to take even the most subtle transition areas and basically um, select the solid version of the color and the background and to be able to uh, isolate that. In the Topaz Remask 3 video tutorial that I have on YouTube, I talk about that and I actually talk about it pertaining to this particular image over here and how I use it. So uh, I, I recommend that you look at that Remask 3 video tutorial and it will definitely answer your question. Thanks again everybody and thank you Greg, I really appreciate the tips to learn some new stuff like always. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, thanks everybody, we'll talk to you soon.